This video is going to give you a little introduction to using two color counters to represent integers, so positive and negative whole numbers. Um, the kind of two color counters I have are yellow on, red on one side and yellow on the other. Um, different kinds of counters can look different. It doesn't matter as long as you can tell one side apart from the other. Um, now the key that I'm going to use, and again this could be different from person to person, um, is that I'll use yellow to represent positive and red to represent negative. Um, and it's totally fine if you have different colors or your uh, counters look totally different. They could be different shapes, they can be different colors, they don't even have to have colors. As long as you can tell um, the side that you're using for positive apart from the side that you're using for negative. Okay, so the really important thing to know about counters, which um, just comes from something that we know about integers, is that if you have a yellow and a red together, those make zero. Uh, we can call them a zero pair. These are equal to zero if you've got both one of each together. Um, so I didn't put this in the key because the key is something I just decided that yellow was going to be positive and red is negative or other people might have decided. It's just a decision. Um, but it's a mathematical fact that a negative one and a positive... A, Sorry, a positive one and a negative one together uh, make zero. Okay, so with these counters, well, I'll leave that there to remind us. And this we can call a zero pair. And of course it's called a zero pair because it's worth zero. And it's because it's a pair of counters. Okay, so um, there's something that you need to know, a little sort of trick about representing numbers with counters. Um, that if you know it, it makes it quite a lot simpler to add and subtract numbers, integers, with counters. So, well, let's start off. Suppose I wanted to represent a negative, a positive 3. We'll start with positive 3. So I'm going to put 3 positives out. There. Pretty simple. Positive 3. Um, now, the thing that's interesting is that there are different ways to represent positive 3 with counters. And I don't mean if somebody else had green counters. I mean, with these counters here, this represents positive 3. But I'm going to use this idea down here, that a positive and a negative together make 0. So I'm going to do another representation of positive 3. So I'm starting just exactly the same. But look what I'm going to do now. I'm going to add... A positive and a negative. It doesn't matter that I put the negative underneath. I guess that did that to organize myself so I could really see. This pair here is worth zero. So this, these five counters all together, those are worth positive three. One, two, three, and zero. And again, maybe I'll just tuck that over slightly. This here, all of this is also worth positive 3. 1, 2, 3, 0, and 0. And again, you can have a jumble. It doesn't matter if you've got them nicely lined up. This little pile here is worth positive 3 because that's 0, that's 0, and there are 3 left over. All right, we'll just do a couple more examples. We'll do something really similar, but maybe with negative 2. So here's a real simple way to represent negative 2. Two negatives. And if I'm looking for other ways to represent negative 2, I can start with the same idea. And then I just add any number of zero pairs that I feel like. So there, that's a representation of negative 2. And if I want, I can add a different number of zero pairs. And again, I'm organizing it like this because I think it makes it easy to read. But it doesn't necessarily have to be organized like that. So this group of counters here is worth negative 2 because negative 1, negative 2... 0, 0, and 0. Alright, I hope that was helpful. Thanks.